Awareness is beyond all that is known. It is said God created man in his image. What does it mean? When we think of that God created man and we consider it to be a physical appearance. God is not a physical appearance. It is unknown and unknowable, unmanifest. Yet still it is manifest. You cannot know it by ordinary means. It is invisible and yet still it is visible. But it is visible through its manifestations. Just as you can cannot see the electric current, but you can see its manifestations. When electric current passes through the various instruments, its, its manifestation becomes evident. One of the most important and clear explanation of this comes through a 3rd century Hindu mystic Shankar. He comes from the southernmost tip of India. It is said he was found wandering in the Himalayan mountains. The distance is of thousands of miles. He was five years of age, barefooted. Assume the monkhood. How did he reach there? It's a miracle in itself. And when he was wandering in the mountains, he met a master, a sage, Govind Pad Acharya was his name. He asked this boy, seeing this boy, strange, courageous, and had a different kind of aura around him, who are you? He composed a composition of six stanzas of four line each. This is known as Nirvan Shatkam. Shatkam means one that is of six stanzas, a composition of enlightenment or renunciation or deep understanding or the being or the soul or the root composed in six stanzas known as Nirvan Shatkam. Nirvan means enlightenment or the Atma Shatkam or the, the Sutras of Ru or Soul or the Being. It is a beautiful composition, musical and it has a rhythm. Mano Buddhi Ahankar Chittani Naham I am not the mind, nor intellect, nor ego sense, nor reflection of the inner self or chitta, or the memory or the storehouse. We continue to live either by our intellect or the ego sense, or the storehouse of the memory, or we continue to live with a combination of all these. At times, always intellect comes to operate, ego comes to operate. We operate through the past memories. Then he says, I am not the five senses, the eyes, ears, nose, I am beyond all that. So that which is beyond all that, what is that? You remember you are listening to me, but you are not seeing. You have an experience that this voice belongs to Tao Shu Buddha. So you can recognize it. But if you can see it also, and then the eyes, whatever it is seeing, a form is made and it is put in a place that the sound, the ears record a sound and put it in a place and then that which controls the sense organs, the meditation, dhyan, it confirms, yes, the person that you are seeing and the person you are hearing is the same. 
So there is something beyond the sense organs that is meditation. The eyes, ears, throat, nose, skin. I am not the five senses, instead I am beyond that. I am neither the five elements of which the human body is composed of, the ether, the space, the earth, the fire, the water, the wind. Then who are you? The question comes. I am eternal, all-knowing and bliss, born out of my own free will, self-illumined, love and pure consciousness. He continues. Neither can I be termed as energy, the life force, nor five types of breath that comes into different parts of the body, nor the seven material essence, nor five matter coverings. Then I am neither the instrument of illumination the procreation, motion, grasping, or speaking. Then again a question comes, then who are you? I am the eternal, all-knowing bliss. My form is eternal, unborn, unmanifest, pure love and pure consciousness continues. These are the attributes. I have no hatred or dislike, nor afflictions, nor liking, nor greed, nor delusion, nor pride, nor hallucination, nor feeling of envy, nor jealousy. I have no duty. I have nothing to do. Because there is nothing that I do not have nor any money, nor desire, or anything else. I am not even liberation. I am indeed the eternal, knowing, bliss, unmanifest, love, and pure consciousness. Then another thing comes up that if some people are concerned about virtues, they are busy in collecting the virtues, others are vices. I have neither virtue nor merit. I do not commit sins nor good deeds, nor have happiness or sorrow, pain or pleasure. I am beyond pain and pleasure, all that is dualistic. I do not need any mantras, holy places, scriptures, does not matter what is scripture that you are talking about. A scripture in general, nor rituals, nor sacrifice. I am none of the Troid because there is three things. You are observer. You observe something that is the object and something that happens between the observer and the observed. This is a trinity. I am none of the triad of the observer, one who experiences the process of observing or experiencing or the object being that is being observed or experienced. I am indeed eternal, all-knowing, bliss, unmanifest, love and pure consciousness. I am neither afraid of death as I do not have death because I am unborn and unmanifest beyond birth and death. I have no separation from true self, no doubt about my existence, nor I have discrimination on the basis of birth. I have no father, no mother. I did not have a birth. I have no relative, no friend, no guru, no disciple. Someone asked Buddha, 
Where would you go after you die? Buddha had a candle in his hand. He put off the candle, blew the candle, and he asked, Where has the flame gone? Where has the where does the flame go after it is put off? And where does it come from? No yet. The flame was unseen. You could not see the flame and all of a sudden when you use the matchbox, matchbox and the candle comes in contact with one another, a flame is lit. When you blow out, the flame disappears. Where does it go? To heaven or hell? No, it remains right there. Where will I go? I have nowhere to go. I come from nowhere. Thus came, thus gone is another name for Buddha, Tathagata. The friend, relative, master, disciple, these are the games that I have to perform. These are the roles that I have to perform in different ways. I am all pervasive. I am without any attributes, without any form, neither attachment to the world nor to the liberation. I am in the world, the world, the world is not in me. I have no wishes for anything because I am everything, everywhere and every time, always in a state of equilibrium. And what is that that can be in equilibrium? The light, the awareness, the consciousness, the love. No one has seen it, but we can experience when it happens, when love is shown towards you, when someone Ex exhibit something which is beyond our understanding, then we can understand it. This pure consciousness, love. That is my nature. And Shankar continues to explain these sutras in different compositions, in different stanzas, different aspects that are necessary to know. Raman Maharishi used to ask his disciples that you do not have to do anything. Just go on asking a question, who am I? When you say, who am I? First the question comes up, I am the body, I am the mind, I am the intellect. But then you analyze, you go deeper into it. Am I really the body? Am I really the emotions? Am I really the brain? Then you will find at the end nothing remains, only an empty space remains. It is like peeling an onion. You go on removing the layers, all the layers will be accumulated, but in the end you find an empty space. You can take a flower. Where is its smell? The smell of the flower and the fragrance, the fragrance and the beauty is some total. You can cannot remove the petals and put them together and you say it will have a beauty, it will have a fragrance, it is gone. Awareness is to be aware that you are not the body and the mind. You are aware on your own authority, not because the scriptures say so or the master says so. This can come out of your memory as well. And then you can go on repeating every morning and evening, I am not the body. Certainly that will not help. It is not a question of repetition. Instead it is a question of deep understanding. And when understanding dawns, you know, you do not need to repeat. You are repeating, you go on repeating your Zikr, sutras, mantras, whatsoever it is, because you do not know. And if you understand, then what is the point of repeating? I have heard of a monk who stayed with a master once. Every morning he would sit and chant a Sanskrit mantra, I am not the body, I am not the mind, I am pure Brahma the ever-expanding consciousness. 
He continuously used to chant this for one and a half hour. First day the master did not say anything. Second day again he remained quiet. And the third day he asked him, You seem to have not known it as yet. The disciple was dazed because normally we are asked to chant these mantras, these words. Because if you have known, then there is no need to chant. And chanting is not the way to know. Knowing is to know something is an altogether different process, different methodology. You have, if you have known this, then it is foolish to continue to repeat. And if you have not known it, then too, it is foolish because just by repeating, how can you know? How can you know by just repeating it? Certainly not. If man goes on repeating that I am a man of great sexual potential, you can be certain that he is important. Why repeat it? I am a man and that too very potent and powerful. And if a man repeats this, one and a half hour every day. What does it mean? And what does it matter? If someone goes on saying, I love you darling, three, four times a day, rest assured the man does not love the darling. If he has really loved, then there is no need to repeat his expressions, his gestures, his presence will reveal that. It shows that it shows that something that is just opposite is in his mind. He repeats because deep down he knows that he is important, he does not love. And if he, and he does not love the darling, now he is trying to fool himself with saying that I am a powerful man, I love you. If you are powerful, you are, then there is no need to repeat it. The master told the monk, this shows that you have not known. This is a perfect indication that you are still identified with the body. And by repeating it, you are fooling yourself. How can you get out of this? How can you know? How can you understand that you are not the body if you go on repeating it? You have to go through the process that Raman asked. Raman told his disciples, you have to do nothing else, simply ask the question, who am I? And this is what the scriptures say. And one of the hadith says, Man arfan apsahu arfan rabbahu. One who has known himself, Knowing himself or knowing yourself, what does it mean? Does it mean that I am a man, I am a very important person, I hold a high position? Does this mean? No. It means what is your reality, what is your identity? And that is that I am not the body, not the mind, not the intellect not the memory, not the relation. Before I was born, I did not know my father. I did not know my mother. And even after I die, I will not know even if I meet them on the street. I will not know that this person had been my father or my mother in the past lives. But the memory remains. To understand, you need to be a witness. Then, when hunger comes, Watch whether it is in the body or in you. You will realize that your body needs food. When illness comes, again watch where it, where it is, in the body or in you. But we go on saying that I have a headache. Yes, the body has a headache and I am aware that my body has a headache. I am aware that there is a problem in my stomach. But I am not sick because I know that I am not the body. Body is the dwelling place where I dwell. 
mind. The thought is not mine. I am not the thought. But I illumine the light that I am. That illumines a thought. It comes on the screen. Does its work and disappears. An idea comes. Watch where is it coming from. In the mind or in you. When a feeling arises again, watch. By being more and more watchful, you will attain to awareness one day. By repeating, no one has ever attained to awareness. Buddha used to emphasize to his monks to begin with mindfulness. Mindfulness is the mechanism through which you will learn to be aware. And you do not need to do, be mindful of big things. Begin with the small things that surrounds you. For instance, you put on your clothes, you take out your nice shirt, a jacket, shoes, you put on all that. Throughout the day, you get the compliment, it gives you elegance, it protects you. When you come back, how do you treat these? Are you treating these lovingly? When you return, the key for the car is very important. The key for the house is very important. When you return home, do you place it mindfully? Or you just put it and then afterwards you create a kiosk in the house and inquire where is my keys. How will anyone else know where is your key? It depends on where you have really put it. You have to begin the exercise in mindfulness with small things. When you are doing something, do not do mechanically. Instead, be aware every moment that I am lifting the cup and it is now touching my lips. It is going through the esophagus. And when you begin to be aware of small things, you are mindful of that. Slowly and slowly, something dawns within you. Something becomes established in you and that is your awareness. Then you realize for the first time that I am not the body, nor the mind, nor the intellect, nor the ego sense and not the storehouse of the memory. I am eternal, unmanifest, embodiment of light, born out of my own free will, and bliss is my nature. Bliss is my nature.